Welcome to the UIUC talk show, where we talk with the most interesting people with the most interesting ideas. Today, we have a very special guest, um, Husna, and um, we're very re excited to talk with her today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing and wonderful, well, and well. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> very, uh, very, uh, very beautiful answer, I would say. Thank you. Something I'm curious to know is that we overlap in a lot of things growing up, right? So the first time we met was at Argonne National Laboratories, where you did a lot of cool things, and we kind of overlap. And it's and then you came to U of I, and we kind of knew, oh yeah, I'm going there too, but we never really talked. And then you ended up in the same research class I was taking, which is you know a lot of coincidences. So I'm kind of wondering, since you know, since high school, you we were we were kind of similar in the way of how we were always like doing things and like learning, and like a lot of people in high school were not necessarily doing that. So um, I'm curious, like, what were some of the things you, like, like what were some of the things you were doing when you, you know, when you were growing up that led you to what you're doing now, and why were you doing those yeah. things? Oh, that's a great question. I think I mean you can probably guess, but. You know how I was raised, like my parents, um, they're very hardworking. So as a kid, and me being, I think me being the oldest child also contributes to that because I basically raised my siblings and then my cousins, little cousins. And so there's always that individuality and kind of being responsible and like a go getter. But as a child, I was also very, uh, like so impressed and fascinated by technology and when I grew up, that was basically when technology was advancing at its highest, like iPhone, Blackberry, all that stuff. So I saw it all before my eyes. And uh, I used to be like the tech service for my home, like anybody in my family, like literally they would come with me, uh, come to me with like a phone or I don't know, like broken TV or whatever. And I would just fix it right then and there. And that kind of got me in that like critical thinking mode. And that's how I grew up. And then, you know, when I went to uh, like fifth grade, I was in robotics and then it Kind of took off from there um my interests yeah you know for fun like i i like to do um uh you know on the ipad pro i like to code uh so <laughs> but like, and make games like what like games what yeah yeah games like what like what uh so there's this one game where <laughs> i don't know how to describe it. it's like you're like a <laughs> monster and you jump through the levels and um okay yeah i, I mean i like to do that stuff but not as I, wonder I would what not. what says about your personality. Anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it as a career okay, because okay. I don't think it would be fulfilling for me. Like I want to like be part of the public sphere and help people and like uh, kind of be involved in that way. And for me, I know like all the CS people I talk to, they're like, "Oh, I'm just I'm gonna get a job at like Facebook, Microsoft, Google." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while that's all great and like the benefits working there is great. I think uh, there's more to life than just Google and Microsoft and Facebook and yeah. Okay, but I don't think you understand like how big mm -hmm. of a decision that is. Meaning, it's hard because a lot of us, we kind of we want what we like. We we place the value of things based on what other people want, right? And like everyone just wants this thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone just wants it. You can just say like, no, I don't want that. Like, yeah, screw it. Well, yeah, like. like most people don't do that. Most people are like, oh my God, I want a job. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Google, uh. Yeah. They're like, okay, no, that's not, that's not it. Yeah. I do want to know, like, your brain I, through that. It's like personal value what you value. And me personally, I don't care about how much I make, like, when I'm, you know, done with school, uh, whether I be a, a lawyer, a doctor. Yeah, they make money, but actually, doctors, the first three years, they make minimum wage. So they they go through, like, 10 years of school, 300K of debt, and they get paid minimum wage. Lawyers, I'm not really familiar with them, but they probably get, you know, same minimum wage. So for me, like, money's not what I'm aiming to go for. I know that, you know, if money is an issue, okay, I'll have to figure it out then. But I don't plan on, you know, picking a career based on how much I'm going to get paid. I mean, that's a factor. It's important. Mm -hmm. But right now, like, I think there's other things that I'd rather do, yeah. But yeah, everything, everyone has different value. If you value like computer engineering or like STEM, beautiful, that's great. And <laughs> society does value that and that's great. And there's also value in like humanities or liberal arts or um, all these really, really great fields that are sometimes under, undermined, you know, by 
STEM fields. But I think it's important. It's good to be part of both, and that's what I want to do, be part of both. Right, yeah. and, and it's important to make this, like, to come to this conclusion because yeah. you grew up with, as you said, like, as a tech-savvy tech person, but you yeah. chose to do something else. Yeah. Um, but was there ever a, a time in your life when you, like, had, like, when you knew, like, you wanted to do law or med school? Like, mm -hmm. you could have chosen, like, many things. Like, you, you said you wanted to work in the public sphere. Yeah. But why law and med school? Oh. Yeah, so it's kind of, so I used to be, or I still am kind of, um, it really into like video, videography, filmmaking, oh. uh, video editing, like I used to make, um, so when I was a kid, like I used to watch YouTube, YouTube was a great influence on me. Um, and there were these YouTubers and they would like vlog, you know, but this was in the start of vlogging. Like this was like when I was in like fifth grade. So I was inspired to like film every single day for like, I think I did it for a year. And I just filmed, you know, whatever, my life. Um, and that got me into like, okay, you know, what did I observe in f when you're looking through, you know, a lens, your life. And I saw the different types of people, the different types of um, communities, how people interact. And really, for me, I've lived in a bunch of different places, you know, city, rural, urban, suburb. And you can see that there's a whole lot of different people, um, how they act where they uh, live, how they live, what their background is. So I thought, okay, I want to like work to understand more of these people. And that's when I initially chose law. Like I wanted to be a politician to really get involved in like what public policy is and how that directly affects you and you. And if you're international, if you're domestic, if you're um, like a refugee or if you're, you know, undocumented, like how, how does like the law affect each and every person? I wanted to be a part of that. Um, so that's why I wanted to be a politician. Uh, but then I realized, like, if you're a politician, your life is literally publicized, like, 24-7. And I don't think I could deal with that. But also, it's a really hard job. Right. And I'm not saying other jobs aren't hard, but I couldn't do law. So, Diff yeah. It's a different type of hard. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah. Every, basically, everything is hard. But when you're really loving it, it's not, you're going to deal with that, you know, difficulty. Yeah. And embrace it. You mentioned YouTube. What's on your YouTube page or TikTok page these days? Mm. And, you know, the reason why I ask that is, you know, a lot of these algorithms, they seem to know us better than we know ourselves. So That is so true. What's on your YouTube page or TikTok uh, page sure. these days? Do you mean, like, my, like, uh, feed or, like, what's on my... When you go on YouTube, right? Oh, got it. You, you see these videos yeah. they show okay. up. Like, for me... Like a recommendation. Yeah, a recommendation. Okay. I get yeah. But for, okay, like, so, for me, it shows mm -hmm. a lot of, like, startups, like, philosophy yeah. things. I would... I would, uh, yeah. Really. Um, for me, so first would be like tech stuff. Mm. My favorite, one of my favorite YouTubers, her name is Shelby Church. And if I could like not do school, I would do what she does. She's like a lifestyle, like tech, uh, tech, tech lifestyle filmer, I guess. She is really great with like her investments and like what she does in life. She's like so successful and she's only like 25 ish. Um, but yeah, so she, her videos, you know, she makes videos like, um, I, I don't know, like I lived in my Tesla for 30 days or like I rented my <laughs> Tesla on Turo or how to, you know, uh, invest in a property and sell it or uh, rent it on Airbnb. But, and I love that stuff. I love real estate too. That's something I do. And yeah, so that's on my uh, recommended. And then like car videos, I really like cars and like mechanics and, um, and then occasional uh, like food <laughs> indian food cooking videos will be on there so <laughs> yeah yeah that's basically what's on there yeah yeah it's interesting you know something i, I you know so something i find interesting to to see when i'm trying to figure out okay what do i want to do is that like today i have a bunch of things that i wanted to do and i had a had a quiz and a test and i was like okay i could take it like later but like do like if I take it today, I don't have to worry about later, and I could have more time. So, in cases like that, like that's where I would ask myself, like if I were if I were to die today, what what would I actually do? Yeah. And the answer is probably what I should be doing. So wait, I have a question. So yeah, if you had like a ch so you had like one thing to do, and it's like you get to pick for like Monday to Friday, you can pick any time to do it. You're saying you would pick it? Would you pick it in like the beginning of the week so you have the rest of the week to like? move on to different things or would you pick it at the end of the week and then ha have like time to build up to perform that task 
what, what, like, what, are, what, like, what are we talking about? Like any, let's say like an exam or something. Yeah. So if you were given the choice, okay, I'm going to take it. I can take it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Are you the type of person, like, would you complete that on as early as possible? Or are you the type of person, like, put it at the end? And well, like, yeah. You know. So for school, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. School, it doesn't really matter. This yeah. School, no, whatever, no, yeah. But, so. <laughs> well, if, okay. If school doesn't matter in that regard. Then right, right. No, but like, what about something else? Yeah. So I guess. So yeah, for school, just quickly. So there's been studies with the CBTF. Mm. The people who take it earlier do better. Yeah. So that this whole, whole paper I read, so you, yeah. you can read it too. People who take it earlier, they do a lot better. Mm -hmm. So if I were like technically where what, what I was supposed to be doing in school and actually be studying, doing everything I was supposed to, yeah, yeah. I probably would have taken it like. Sometimes it depends. Like today, I took it the first day. Usually, not so much. Uh, mm. But depend depends. Yeah, I would usually take it like at the beginning. But yeah, and he does well. So <laughs> there you go. But I also like I also think about how my week is gonna look like. Like let's say my exam is next week, mm -hmm. and I know my weekend is gonna be insane. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I just move it back just so that I, I get the, some weekdays to study for. Yeah, it. that's a good strategy. Yeah. yeah, for other things, the thing is inspiration. It's only there for so long. Mm -hmm. So when I have something I want to do, I just do it as soon as yeah. possible because yeah. inspiration yeah. just goes. Like if I have an idea for something, I need to do it as soon as possible because inspiration, it's, it's like, it's not something I can like, have an idea, I can write it down. Mm -hmm. And I do that. I have a, a note since like five years ago with ideas for companies, books, whatever, anything. Yeah. And it's there and I could come back to it. But if it's something I could just do, like, so a couple of weeks ago, I wrote, I wrote an essay about teaching yourself math online. That I wrote for this person who wanted to, you know, learn math and he dropped out of college, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was for him. And I was like, okay, what if I could make a website that would be like the guy you need to learn math? Okay, like maybe you want to learn calc. Like, what's the best place to learn calc? Mm -hmm. Here you go. Khan Academy, Pulse yeah. Notes. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. So yeah. that's how I think about it. That's awesome. That's great. Is it? Yeah. Okay. No, I like <laughs> it. And I think it depends, you know, when you think about like, that you thought you said inspiration it's fleeting and so when you have these set things in your life like oh you have to take an exam whatever if if you're not gonna like think about it five years from now like i don't think it's worth to dwell on like yeah it, exams are important but it's, it's one exam like okay you do bad or right. okay you you know mess up on this exam it, it's not the end of the world and i think that's something i learned the hard way like i used to be a perfect student and then I came to college and like... You still are. <laughs> no, no, no. Because like, I don't feel smart anymore. Like in, okay. in college, like I'm not the smartest person in the room or like I'm not the smartest person that I know. And and so it's like, oh, you have to learn to, you know... You, you, your you, expectations. In a yeah. Way. And don't be afraid to fail. I think that's something that I was always scared of. Like I was always like, no, I have to get an A on this. I have to, uh, you know, do this presentation or I have to submit this proposal. Like it has to be perfect and spotless. And I never failed to mm -hmm. learn how to fail and how to deal with that. And sometimes failure actually gets you in like better positions. Cause like one of my, the best things in my life right now is like what I do for research. And it was actually, I got rejected for my first choice and this was the, like the next one. And it literally changed my life. So, you know, that's how I knew like, oh, failing is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and you can just tell us that I changed my life, and that's all. It's more. So, tell me more. I, 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 oh, yeah. I don't know, but I don't really know. Like, yeah, yeah. like that it changed my life. That's a big statement. Yeah. So I, you know, I mentioned I love technology and stuff, and I've always wanted to like, kind of work on like the intersection of health and technology. Hmm. Um, and specifically, I didn't know this actually about like myself uh, when I was thinking of research. Like, what are my research interests? But um, so yeah, intersection of tech and health and how can I work in that space? And so I found this opportunity. Uh, it's like human factors, which is like human engineering. And so it talks about, or it really focuses on how things can be better designed for different types of people. And one of the niches that I work in is like older adults. And then within that is older adults with mobility disability. And really that kind of, that whole population resonates with me because I've always worked uh, with older adults, you know, be it my grandparents or whatever, or other older adults in the community, and knowing how to, you know, work with them uh, to introduce technology, because they might not be the most tech savvy, obviously. Um, and some people are get impatient when they try to introduce it to them, or them themselves get, get impatient. So it's really about 
you know, changing their life with technology. Um, and that's something that I'm, you know, working on right now. And I love it. Uh, it's with like Amazon Alexa and how having to kind of integrate it with older adults in their life. Um, another thing that I do is like a telehealth robotics. So, you know, very similar, uh, like a robot that comes and attends and ho- helps an older adult. And yeah, that's my, that was like my dream to work in. So I'm here and I love it. I think I've read about this in the newsletter. Um, do they oh. like, are they looking for more people to like participate in the study or something? Oh, like older adults? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about dreams, right? And mm. I have a question I want to ask you. So let's say you had all the time in the world to oh. work on a project you wanted, like all the time, all the resources. Oh, okay. You don't have to worry about anything, no homework. No deadlines. Please. And we also got Ambani to give you money. No. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. give me, I don't want his money. <laughs> what would you work on? Okay. Um, I would do... I would do... Um, like, um, so, like, can you reiterate the question? All right, sure. So, yeah. you, you have all the time, yeah. all the money. All the resources, whatever. Do you know what we're, to wear with school? Go- yeah. Regardless oh, of the my. sponsor. Dude, that's yeah. such a great question. Okay, what I would do... I would do so. I would do like investigative journalism. Okay, I would first. Oh, this is a hard question. You can think about no, 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 it. I'll yeah, think. Yeah. So first, I would get like That's obviously like, education. Okay, okay, okay. Because I want that foundation. So like, I would want to be like a physician and like a lawyer and get an engineering degree. This is in a perfect world. Like like you yeah, said, I know. Is, obviously now. Okay. Yeah. So I would get all three of those things, and then I would do investigative journalism in like war-torn countries or like displaced populations all around the world and like do that because uh, something that's really important to me and is to you know make sure people are getting represented prop- uh, properly and even now like politics doesn't really do that for certain populations and we can see that now we've ha- always seen that so I want to be a part of that and uh, yeah I would do like kind of investigative journalism um, and I do a little bit right now but um and I'd want to be like an ambassador or like a uh, public representative uh, in like the UN or like, you know, some global organization like the WHO, the WHO. Um, yeah, that would be my dream. Like that, that would be a project that I work on is to like make sure that these displaced populations, they are represented correctly um, because they aren't right now. And like Orientalism is part of that, but that's something else. That's that's a that's a really deep subject, so <laughs> I won't get into that. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So how is that? I think what you're doing it's not that far from on, yeah. from from that. You're doing what like uh, six million years or something, and then you're doing. <laughs> um, so I guess like what, what I'm asking is that you that's like a very like specific thing. Yeah. Investigative yeah. journalism. Yeah, there's no like career no, 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 for I, that. No, no, don't even worry about it. That, yeah, that's, okay, that's, okay. That's, 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 that's completely yeah. BS. That's not, <laughs> I mean, like right now, like there's no path that you can tell your advisor, I want to do this and there. Yeah, yeah listen. Obviously. Yeah, this is, and that's the same for you because I know that you're like very multifaceted and you want to do different things. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, investigative journalism. Uh. So, there was this guy, a mathematician, Richard Hammond. And he used to work at Bell Labs, which is this place where, uh, you know, a lot of Nobel Prizes came. Yeah. So anyway, so Richard Hammond was this guy, very smart and everything. And he would sit on different tables. So he would go to the physics table, the chemistry table, the math table. So at first he would sit at the physics table and he would talk to Bardeen, he, he, the guy who got the two Nobel Prizes. And he would meet these people. And then, and then he, w- he would go and ask them, what are the important problems in your field? And after they reply, they would say, why are you not working on them? And people would get like really like, Upset. like fiery. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, so he would do that, you know, the, the, the physics table got a bunch of normal prices. They all left. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, okay, where do I go now? Okay. I'm going to go to the chemistry table. And then he asked this guy, you know, the same question. What are the important problems in your field and why are you not working on them? Well, this guy just kicked him out of the table <laughs> and never talked to him again. But. 12 months later, the guy came up to him, Hamming, you really got under my skin, but I really thank you because now I, I got such and such a word and now I'm the president or whatever, X thing. Same goes to you. You know what you want to mm-hmm. do. Why are you not doing that? I think in a way I am, but right now 
I guess my priorities are different because it, that would be like in a perfect world, right? And when, like you said, like no, no school, no homework, like <laughs> no stress about getting into medical school. Um, and so even now, I guess my first priority, like right now in this moment would be like focus on school and focus on, you know, your opportunities and your involvement in like the community, whatever, um, and get into med school. Like that's literally my first priority right now. So after that, yeah, I would definitely uh, further pursue like journalism and, and health journalism and yeah, stuff like that. But at the point, mm -hmm. assuming, I don't know, but you, there's a, like, a high likelihood that you're going to have some depth, which means you're going to be, or, or maybe not, I don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're going to be some, or maybe, you know, you did X years and like, you're never just going to go around the world and like, you know, forget what mm -hmm. I did. So there's like a little bit of like sun cost in there. Yeah, absolutely. And how, that how cost, you, yeah, how do I, what? How, how do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's really like a, a line between you like what your ambitions are and what's the reality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to like bridge them together. So I always say to myself, this is not something that you should do, but I always say to myself, oh, it's a tomorrow problem. <laughs> oh, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I do that for like only certain things that I know like right now it's not in me to do it. But, and when I get there, okay, I like get ready and I do it and I do fine. But that's something that I'm trying to work on myself too, is to stop doing that. And kind of like what you said, if you have an idea, if I want to do something, I do it right now. And, and for me, I feel like there's not enough hours in the day to do what I want to do sometimes. Agreed. But um, I think if I manage my time or if I manage my priorities, maybe I will be able to achieve that. So, yeah. Um, you're, you're taking what, three majors currently, right? I'm, I'm, I haven't like <laughs> declared things because my advisor told me just wait till you're done and mm -hmm. then declare it. Okay. So I'm taking all the, you know, classes for these things and, um, really trying to get like an interdisciplinary education. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so it's obviously a lot like, yeah, like these majors, right? So, but you also have these ambitions, which are like personal ambitions, which, do not always relate to school work, right? Because you, you have to do it on your own personal mm. time. So what are some of the things you're, and I'm sure it's like pre really difficult for you to manage both of these things because I, um, I think Juan David and I both can relate with it because we both have a lot of things that we would rather do, but there's also a lot of school work that yeah. we know we have to do. So it's just, it's hard to balance these things. Yeah. and as a result you end up compromising on some things right yeah um like for for example for me i i don't get much um personal time so i, I have to i had to cut down like i like to play the keyboard i like to sketch I like to, but yeah. i had to like cut all of those down just because i could do the other things yeah. so you have to make compromises right um what have been some compromises that you have made mm -hmm. or are making right now sure that's a great question yeah, honestly, I mean, just to answer your question, I, I, for me, I don't think yeah. it's that much like him because, like, he actually cares that much. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I think I, no, it's good. Uh, he's he's the actual. Mm. Like, he wants to do these things, uh, but for me, like, I think that I think there there should there should not be any compromise. Like, this is it. This is what you want to just you do it. Um, but I also, I'm not a good example to be talking about this thing yeah. because I'm not. He's like really good student. I'm not, but um, I would it, disagree though with, yeah. with what you have to say because right, but. What I'm saying, mm, so mm. just to give you some context sure, on sure. what he said, <laughs> he, he said all of that, and yes, true, mm -hmm. and I think you would agree with him that you know they're, they're, you know, you need to focus on these things. Yeah. But just to like just let you know, just right now here, is that like why do you need to wait if, to graduate? Why do you need to wait X amount of years to do what you want? Some context. Continue to answer the, the this gentleman question. Sure. So okay, so compromises. One thing that I like, I like, I'm sad about every day is like languages. I love languages. And my, one of my like ambitions in high school was like, I wanted to be a polyglot, which means like, you know, multiple mm -hmm. languages. So uh, like Spanish is something that I love. I absolutely love Spanish. And, you know, I studied it for like six years and uh, I'm like, I have the seal of literacy um, and it's a big part of my life, but even now it's something that I wish I could study like formally. I wish I could like live in like some you know, Spanish speaking country and really be part of that culture. Um, and it's not 
something feasible right now at the moment. And then, you know, in other languages, like I wanted to branch out and do like Portuguese or like Arabic, um, even like learn my language better, like Hindi and Urdu. I wanted to get like super perfect at it. Um, and these are things that you just have to let go sometimes because they're not feasible in the moment. So that's one big compromise I've made. Um, in other ones, I wouldn't like rank on the same yeah. as the same magnitude. But yeah, language is just a big one. And I mean, I would say you're a polyglot. Like, you know Spanish like really well. English, I think yeah. you know. <laughs> and then Urdu and Hindi, like, I, I mean, he can probably test, but I don't know. <laughs> but um, I think like you, I think you, you were successful if you want to. Like, yeah. No, no, no. I, I definitely do. I'm not like upset with myself at what I have because I'm like grateful that I can know this stuff. And um, for me, like I always have said this, I think I like wrote it in my college essay, but I think like language is the key to the world. I think you want to understand people, you have to learn their language. You have to learn how to talk to them because some things you can't translate and some emotions you can't translate. And to know a person, you need to like speak to their heart and, right. and language is something that is just, it opens all the doors. So that's something I... That's uh, Nelson Mandela's quote. If you want to talk to, or may, maybe not. Oh, but really? It is. I think yeah. He says something nice. along the lines of, "If you want to talk to to their brains, you know, talking in yeah. different language. But if you want to talk to their hearts, I mean, if you want to, yeah, if you want to talk yeah. to their hearts, talk in their own language." Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and it, it's it's cool because language is kind of like it's kind of like music. It's kind of like food, mm. where it brings people together. Um, And even like teaching people, like people ask you, oh, how do you say this in your language or whatever? And they get excited and I get excited. And, you know, there's like a language exchange there where you learn um, and you get to know about them more on a deeper level and a more, I guess, personal level too. What's the next language on your list? Oh. What do you want to learn? Next? Um, I would do Arabic for sure. Okay. Like sometimes I just wish I knew it. And I guess it goes with a lot of my musical um ambition or musical taste as well like i love i love like arabic music i guess french music too like on my spotify that's the only thing i listen to is, is french arab mix okay. uh, like that fusion um because i guess people americans wouldn't know but like in france a lot of like the top artists they're um they're from like algeria morocco like north africa and they speak arabic and they mix that in their music And that's what makes it so like gorgeous to hear and listen to. And it brings people together. Yeah. So that's why I really love it. But yeah, Arabic or French. I would learn. Have you ever been to like um, a country which is like, let's say, speak Spanish and have to like, have you ever tried it out in the... Oh, yeah. Like, so the niche? <laughs> Yeah. Um, many times. Uh, so in like Spain, we were trying to go to a certain location. Um, and so we got in a taxi, whatever, and we told this person, like, take us here. And they took us to the street that was named. It was, <laughs> <laughs> they took us to the street. So, like, say, so it was Mesquita, right? They took us to the street Mesquita instead of the actual <laughs> building. Oh, my God. I get it now. That's, that's yeah, yeah, so Mesquita means, like, mosque. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, so we're trying to go there. And they took us to the street, and it was in the middle of a neighborhood, right? So we got out, we're stranded in the middle of this neighborhood, and these owners, like the house people, come out, and the neighbors, whatever, and they're they're speaking in Spanish, right? Get them out. <laughs> they don't speak English, obviously. So yeah, yeah. me, I'm there like a sophomore in uh, high school, and like I'm only like two, three years into my Spanish language but i'm like talking to them getting to know them we took a photo with them they gave the business card like no it was way. so cute and you wouldn't get that experience like right. if you didn't try you know to speak their language right. you didn't try to engage uh with them that was one time and then another time was in italy a couple of years ago and um so we we wanted to travel i think it was a long distance like an hour drive and we were in a taxi uh he only speaks italian i don't know italian So I was talking to him in, in Spanish and Italians can understand Spanish, but it's not, you know, reversible, I guess, because I couldn't, I couldn't tell what he was saying. <laughs> I was like trying to say, can, I said, I remember clearly, like, I said, can you uh, take us here and wait for us and then we'll come back and you can drive us back. And I said, I know it's an hour drive. Like, are you okay with that? And he was like, see, 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 see. So like, I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. So that was cool. And that was when I was more like fluent in Spanish. So 
I just knew, you know, what I was saying and making sure he understood. But、um, that was something cool, just like、mm. that, to use those skills in the real world. Right, it's a different feeling. I would, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah.、Okay. Yeah, I think one of the big ideas I'm thinking a lot about is that.、Um, so I, I wrote this essay like、mm-hmm. two years ago about how language affects reality and everything, and I sent it to this professor who I'm like who I interview here, John、mm-hmm. Allen, and he just like blown away by this thing. And one of the biggest things is that that I, I'm I'm wondering like if you have, if you experience that in experience that in some way, is that one of the biggest things that I've realized is that language, like each specific, specific language. Gives you an identity, a new way, a new persona, right? And I'm wondering how that changes, and like if you think differently, and how your mind. Cha- like for me, for just quickly to tell you, like when I speak in Spanish, in Spanish, I I'm usually more like calm, more like you know, I feel like more humid, like you know, because I you know, come from a warm country, like more like family, like more. Like colloquial, like in English, I'm more like you know individualistic, more business, more things. Like I'm faster, like I, I think way faster in English. And I think it has to do with like the, the way English was developed. You speak four languages, maybe a little more.、Mm. How tell I、like, tell me more about each、yeah. person? Sure.、Um, my my main, I think what you're saying is right. Like. Each language is a different you, like a different version of you, and you might think differently,、uh, like speak differently. I think for me, when I think of like English as like the first, like the main language that I use on a daily basis,、um, that's like more like straightforward. Like you said, like just getting things done, working, being involved,、um, you know, professional.、Um, when I think about Hindi and Urdu, like that's my like. Family language, you know, you speak that with your family or with your other Desi friends. Like, it's kind of like a fun language for me, I guess. Like, I wouldn't have a serious conversation, like a, a speech. I wouldn't give a speech in Urdu because not because I can't. Well, maybe I can't, well, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, sorry,、uh, yeah. uh, but <laughs> because it wouldn't feel. It would feel like lighthearted to me. It would feel like informal, and that also is because you know the specific dialect of. Urdu that I know, it's like Hyderabadi,、mm. and that one is very, you know, it, it has, it's very slang.、Um, it's like really different than regular、uh, Urdu. So, yeah, it wouldn't be like a professional, I guess, language. It's very poetic though.、Um, and then like for Spanish, I guess when I think of Spanish, I think of like my friends、uh, that I used to go to school with that would speak Spanish, and we would speak Spanish to each other only in Spanish, even outside of class. So when I think of, you know, Spanish, I think of Uh, them, I think of them, and I think of like the memories we had, and、uh, ma- mainly like actually like math. Like I, a lot of the Spanish, I guess when I look at math, I think of Spanish. Like I don't know why. I really don't. Like today in physics, I, I was like doing my homework, and I was like, oh my god! Like I was like saying, oh, like in my head, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking in Spanish, like, oh, this is correct. Like I don't know. It was weird, and. That kind of like was surprising to me, but my inner thoughts, I would say, it's just a combination, like, like using every single language in one sentence. I do that a lot.、Um, yeah, but also, language is cool because, like, the language you speak, it gives you a different outlook of the world. I know, like, in Spanish, you know, you have these articles in front that make、uh, words like feminine or masculine, and like German has that too.、Um, I think, or German doesn't maybe, but that changes how you like look at something. So maybe like in Spanish,、uh, like if there's a word for like bridge, and it's like depending on the article, you might think of it as like strong and、uh, you know、um, I don't know strong and and fortified. And if there's another word, maybe it starts with la, you think of it as beautiful or frail or fragile. And that's kind of like the the like the gender norms portrayed on those inanimate objects. That comes from language. I think that's super interesting.、Uh, like, I would love to like learn more about that. But、um, yeah, it does shape your frame of view of the world. And yeah, you're right. And I mean, those two words, you know, bridge would be el puente, and、yeah. then la would be、like、la le, which you know, it's, yeah, you, you, like you can like you you just feel it for some reason. Yeah, it's just a very softer. It's cool because、yeah. like English doesn't have that.、Mm. So. 
-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah and and I'd be it'd be interesting to see how like what that could tell us about learning about the brain and how see yeah. how it works. Yeah. So I don't know. Definitely. You know, what do you wish you see more of in the world? Like for mm -hmm. me, and Adi will tell you in a second what, what he what he wants to see more in the world. Like for me, I want to see so in a world of crazy people, something I think a lot about, like I cannot stop thinking about it. In a world of crazy people, the normal ones are crazy. I want to say it again. So yeah, you, yeah, you say it again. Yeah, it's... In a world of crazy people, the sane ones, the normal ones are crazy. And what that means is that we live in a world where everyone is kind of like automated, not thinking about what they want to do and taking, you know, things, you know, like in, in Brave New World, there, there was summer where people just thinking these things in order to not think. But we can see this in every society, in, in mm -hmm. everything, people like social media, from substances, whatever, X. And like people are just not doing what they want. They're not doing what they love. And you can see like, oh, that's reality. But like, I don't think that's reality. I think there's, <laughs> there's this world and there's like subsets of this world. And the subset I want to amplify is this world where people love what they do, people do what they want, and people are just happy and thinking and like they know exactly what they want to do. Yeah. So that's what I would like to see more of the world. And that's, I think that's what defines a lot of the things I do. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Like, I guess, like, what do you wish someone? I think I'll, I'll talk about it after your answer. Like, yeah, I, I, I wanted to comment on what you said. Like, it reminds me of, um, like American society, very consumer mm -hmm. consumerism. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we we live to work instead of like work to live, and oh, a lot that. of people. Dalai Lama. Huh? I think Dalai Lama said that. Oh, hey, you know all like you know <laughs> the, where they come from. I just I just know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's okay, <laughs> That's okay. funny. Um, you should give me a list of like the names after this. Yeah. Okay. Please. So, uh, what was I saying? So, you live to American. Work. Yeah, American life, it's very consumerism based. And that's where we lose, I guess, our individuality or personality even. When you, you know, work nine to five and then you come and you have to, I don't know, you only have a certain amount of hours to do what you want to do, uh, which contributes to why I think you say the people who don't do that, they're the, the sane ones, but they're also crazy. They, they, are, they're, they're crazy people think they're crazy. Yes, exactly. When they're actually just exactly. as normal as you can yeah. be. And in in you know in a perfect world that would be amazing to happen, but I think there's so many social factors that just contribute to people really living paycheck to paycheck, and that's not something that they can control. But it would be nice if it was like that, yeah. And no. so yeah, what's your answer? Uh, <laughs> what is the question again? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want to see more? Oh, of? what do I want to see more of in the world? Um, I want to see more. That's a good question. Can it be, I want to see more tolerance for each other, mm. more, not, I don't want to say acceptance because that's different, but yeah, tolerance or understanding instead of like fight, 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 or let's, you know, argue and I don't know, defame, deface each other. Um, let's talk about it. You know, let's sit down and try to understand people. I think there's too much, like, you know, dissonance between people where it's like, you, you're you shouting at them and they're shouting at you and you don't really, at the end of the day, you walk away the same as you entered. Hmm. So if we were more, I don't know, if we were more inclined to look at someone and not like judge them just by looking at them right? or look at someone and be like, hey, I want to learn more about you. We have our differences let's you know let's go over the, let's skip over that and just talk to each other there's too much like turmoil in the world mm. so i know it can't all go away obviously but Why i not? think because because <laughs> because so there's always needs there always needs to be like balance i guess and this is like more of like a constructionist approach to it like where it's like you something is justified like there should be good and bad but it's for it to balance but at the same time 
you know, you want to think about, well, what if it was all good? Mm -hmm. And I wish it was like that. Like, that would be perfect. Okay. But not, not all people are given the same conditions to which they can be always happy. They can be always, uh, you know, just. Maybe they're living in poverty. Maybe they need to go rob a store to eat that night. Like, they can't control that. And that's not their fault. Or maybe that, maybe it is. I don't know. But uh, it, it's also like, I don't know. It has to do, there always has to be, I guess, some elitist that's controlling everything. And Whoa. even wow. in America, like, <laughs> big <Whoa>. corporations <laughs> control everything. Okay, you're you're so, saying that's good? No, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying <laughs> the, the corporations controlling everything okay. or like being, you know, involved on each each level of society that affects even like the the bottom of society like tell me names what do you mean names like you say corporation for that's like i don't i don't understand what they are i mean okay we could say like big names like you know bezos and musk and you know gates and okay but like those people did not do anything they, no they i understand not, i they understand they didn't do anything no, no, no. okay no that's not yeah. what i said they you could say they were just normal people like 20 years ago and now yeah. they're like so is it's just racing is being at the top a function mm -hmm. of control or, or, or what or you, what's that you about? have control at the top you know but also we don't know what happens behind closed doors you know we don't know who maybe advises those people to do things or to not do those th do, do, do those things and we don't know what's you know really their intentions with what they do maybe they want to do things and maybe they want to help people but they can't because of you know uh different circumstances so that's something that's i guess left unanswered and maybe we'll never know but i think if you're in a place of power you know it is your responsibility to make sure people are okay that you were given that power you were given that wealth you should first of all no one no one in the right man should have like an like an infinite amount of money like that you cannot even fathom you know okay. you cannot fathom a billion dollars what are you going to do with a billion dollars? even like even like people with like i don't know famous singers or athletes that get paid hundreds of millions of dollars you don't need that money like yeah, right. you no human being needs that much money okay so it's your it's your job to make sure that okay i have all this money do i need it and i know avarice and greed is like when you have when you're in that position you just think of yourself and you don't think of anyone else like That's human nature, I would say. But you still have to take responsibility and help those who are under you. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay, finish, finish. No, no, yeah. I okay, was, so when you say that, who yeah. do you think of? Did you mention? I said No, names. but like, I want to ask again. Like, Specific. You, yeah, just name a woman. You said that. Who do you think of? I mean, I don't want to make... Who comes up to mind? Uh, I... <laughs> I don't. I don't want to say like a specific person, okay. one person. Maybe, I don't want to say one person. Maybe But, say a couple so we can like <laughs> sure, love, okay. like love the average. Okay, so I would say like very highly paid like musicians and athletes. Got it. Very highly paid, you know, people in in tech or you know CEOs and stuff like that, like who are making really a lot of money that more than they can use in their yeah, lifetime. Nice. Yeah. In their lifetime. Okay. If you can't use it in your lifetime, or you know, pass it down to your family, then I think. Okay, you gotta give that money away. Okay. You gotta use it for some public spending or whatever. Perfect. Yeah. Elon Musk, for instance, he's whatever. I think whatever. Whatever. I, I think <laughs> he tries though. It's no, not no, like no. But like, try. okay, he has. He, oh, okay. He, you're giving examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Elon Musk, two hundred million dollars or two hundred billion dollars, whatever. Yeah. Use a couple things. First, he he doesn't have that money like cash. Yeah, it's I a lot understand. Of stocks, it's, it's investments. So he, yeah. Like even okay, I'm gonna sell this stock. Okay. For what? Like. He could sell it, but like then he wouldn't be able to do what he do. And like I think what he what he does now, I think is more valuable than just like throwing the money. Um, maybe I don't know. That's it. Mm. Now, okay. <laughs> let's say who's now mm -hmm. all the money. How do you actually do these things? Oh. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Of, it's like oh my god, you have this much, so yeah, much yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. How no. do you actually do that? Okay. Okay. So like, I don't have like a finite plan. You have a billion dollars, let's say. I have a billion dollars. Yeah. Okay. Which is not that much to, to tell you. Yeah, no. I, I, are you what? kidding me? What? You can't like the like the the mind to even like visualize one billion. It's very hard for humans to like look at one million versus one billion, understand how much of a you know a difference that is. No, I mean, I mean so, it's, uh, it's, it's insane. 
But I'm I know you want to be a billionaire one no, day. No, 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 so. <laughs> no, no. I remember you told me I, <laughs> that you want to okay. be a billionaire. I'm talking. I'm talking like business wise. Like a billion dollars is not like you know the average. You know, an average. You know, there's a lot. You know, I think the average successful company is what I don't know. I don't. I actually don't know a number, but yeah, like, just say it's always whatever. than like a billion. So mm-hmm. I would say like, like a good startup is definitely worth a good startup. Now would be like worth ten billion dollars. Okay. Like if your startup like goes big, like big enough, like I'm not saying Google type, but maybe fifty billion to hundred billion, and you own about you know ten percent, you're gonna have five billion dollars. And if if it goes more, like okay, a billion is a lot, but it's yeah. not in. But, but yeah, go ahead. Remember, you know, I'm the um, I'm the guy who like. Make your wishes come true. Whatever. Sure. I'll give you a billion. Okay. What do you do? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What do I do exactly with one billion dollars? So I would focus. So I'm living in America. I would focus on American issues primarily. So like whether it be you know, uh, I don't know like poverty, public like education. I mean, if you look at a photo of a classroom from the 1960s and a high school classroom today, they look very similar, those photos. Those environments feel the same. There, there really hasn't been anything that's changed. But if you look at, you know, the Honda Accord from 1999 and you look at the Honda Accord today, 2022, there's there's so much advancement. Like, there's, there, it's are, really yeah. different. Like, are they? Telephones, automobiles, technology. It's drastic. But if you look at a classroom from 50 years ago, it's the same. It's much you know very similar so i would definitely spend a lot in education i think the like really large amount of money that students like us have to pay to go to school that's unnecessary especially when other countries have managed to find solutions for that i don't think it's justified me paying like 60k to be here it, you know internationals paying even more domestic people still paying like forty thousand dollars a year i don't think that's fair um for four years per year you know so i would definitely work on spending like make college free i would do that i would make college free that's Uh, a billion is not enough a billion is not the the dollar the the student debt is upwards of a trillion see but student debt is because like we're talking about if i had a billion dollars and i'm dealing with right now what we have right now so i would just cancel those debts okay but a like a billion dollars of a trillion. You know what you, you I know, love you about know, America. You know, you know what yeah. percentage it is? No, no, no. Not even. I understand. I know. I know. America is trillions of dollars in debt, right? Student. I'm not talking. I know. I know. Yeah. And just in general, in the country, is trillions of dollars in debt, right? Mm-hmm. And then like Biden comes and says, "Oh, we don't have enough funding for this." Like, no, no, no. You, they have funding. If they want to fund the military, they will fund the military. But when it comes to education, when it comes to like yeah. healthcare, they say, "Oh, we don't have the funds for that." You have the funds for that. You have the funds for that, but they have their different priorities. So I would have my different priorities with a billion dollars. But one thing that I would focus on definitely is like, uh, you know, education, uh, poverty, and maybe healthcare. But healthcare is a very touchy subject, I would say, like when it t- comes to like universal healthcare. So, yeah. But okay, I'd, yeah. Would you would you feel? Do you think choosing or like this? one spending, topic no, yeah no, I'll, okay. I'll say like spending all of that in america <laughs> rather than okay Amer- okay do you agree with me or not that okay, yeah. america is already like at a pretty good stage in terms of development it, it has like you can say access to resources technology education okay regardless that it's expensive we'll keep that aside for now but in terms of the level of all mm-hmm. of these things we're talking about it's pretty high than many other countries in the world yeah right so why would you choose to spend this money in, in America rather than any other country in the world? I would, I mean, I would, I would spend it in America because I am American. Right, right. But if, I mean, I would also spend it in other countries, but given that it's only a billion dollars, you know, I know that. Like oh, world now, hunger. Now you're saying it's only no, a billion. No, 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 because you, when I said about education, <laughs> oh. you're like, oh, it's only a billion dollars. Turns what are you going to do? You're just going to go for education? No, like, I, I know world hun- hunger can be like, uh, I think it's around a billion to, to, um, I think six, you know, six billion or something. Yeah, six million? Billion, like, billion. Six billion. Yeah, like, I think Elon oh. Musk, or like, I don't know if you saw that, but like, he, he literally, oh, what like, did he say? I don't, I don't know, something. He, he was talking on Twitter with these people, and, and he yeah. was like, 
okay. Like, I think the guy, the CEO of like of the some UN thing replied. Was it UNICEF or uh, some organization? Oh, and he, they, they were like, oh about. my god, you're so greedy. Like, give the money. Okay, he was like, okay, I'll sell this stock right now. No, he was like, give me like six reasons or like give me how. No, 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 give me exactly how like the budget you have right yeah, now and how, how you're going to spend it. They never reply. No, they did. No, they, they did. did. No, but like. No, they did. They did reply? Yeah. And what, what happened? I don't know oh, if you did. donated or not. No. That's another okay. issue. Like okay. where these organizations, you, we don't know what they're doing with the money. We don't know what the Red Cross does with their funds. There's always, I guess, corporations, they want to accumulate capital all the time. Once you get to like a certain level, I guess they just don't care about helping the you know the main public. So that's that's what I've always been like skeptical if I donate somewhere. Like what are they doing with that money? Mm. And that's something that it doesn't prevent me from donating. It doesn't prevent me from doing any of that. But it's still like lingering in my mind when I do it. Um, and I wonder how what happens. You know what what did what do they do? Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't answer the question. Oh, what was the question? So why why? <laughs> oh, why would I spend in America? Yeah, like okay, I, you want to do like public good, right? And yeah. you talked about the world and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I get that you're American, so you want to spend in America. Yeah. But would you feel better if you solve the problems of another country which need it? Mm-hmm. Rather than if I had to, I, I see. I don't want to pick a country, right? Right. But th- you know. You okay? So you would have to think about different populations, displaced populations. My like, what I would think is like, oh, the Middle East. Im- like immediately, the first thing I would think of is okay. Like they are so like uprooted. The birthplace of civilization was there in the Middle East, and now look at it. And we know who did it. Like Brit- British colonization, French colonization, American interference. Um, all of those factors, you know, sectarianism, even internal conflict. But aside from that, like that, pl- those places, they're such beautiful countries with rich history, with amazing people, with the advancements that we use every day came from there. And those people don't deserve any of that. They are underserved. They even the media treats them differently. I would help those people first. And when I think about like, where I would want to work, like if I'm working in, uh, like abroad, I would work in those places and, you know, to help those people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think at the end, of, I, mean, I mean, he likes to say at the end of the day, everything, but at the end of the day, I would say, <laughs> you don't say at the end of the day. No, I'm not really, but he, he loves to say, okay. so that, I think that's why I'm saying it. But mm. at the end of the day, like, you, you, I mean, you like you cannot just go around like, oh, my God, like, I think you just have to help, like, whoever you want. Whoever yeah, you want. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, like, you can just be like, okay, who's the poorest? I'm going to help the poorest. Like, no, because, like, it's different. Like, it's not like, you know, like, you're just black and white. It's a lot, yeah. lot more nuanced. Than that. Yeah, and there's also, yeah, you have a billion or you have, you want to help this population. You should take into account your own experiences, your own background, mm. maybe the communities that you're from, maybe the, the people who have gotten you to where you are now, you want to help that community so i think yeah it can, it's not like oh i'm gonna help the richest or the poorest yeah, yeah. place or the most displaced it, it definitely it depends yeah I'll, like, I'll answer the question because i never replied to your question we, we, oh yeah, yeah we got sidetracked we got no. sidetracked. okay yeah wait. i mean you can you can ask if you yeah want. answer answer okay so the question was what would i want more yeah or what i want to see in yeah. this world right yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. i would say um more people with good intentions. Um, I feel like you, when you're making decisions, you 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 got to think a lot about how others will react to it, right? You don't know how the other is feeling about it. Like the other might be envious if you are too successful mm-hmm. or like um, the other have their own intentions in their mind so that they can, it's, it's obviously not for everyone, but um, it, it can some, like, sometimes get in your way or just make you unhappy and I don't know if you if you're just living in the world if you're just living with good intentions others around you might not always have them and um yeah. I don't know it can it can I feel like it leads to a lot of disagreement and like unnecessary conflict I feel like if everyone just if everyone just thought about the others um more or just or or knew where they came from or like could empathize more and ha- like genuinely had good intentions about everyone else I think that would that would be something yeah. I could help. Yeah, I, I, I think you can tell she's from uh, Gujarat. 
<laughs> I think uh, good intentions too. They may be subjective, you know, yeah, based yeah. on you know where you're from or or what you believe, what's your values. Right. So I think yeah, like you said, that could cause a lot of tension. Maybe even if we have our good intentions, like I don't know, maybe Will Smith had a good intention slapping, <laughs> defending his wife, right? But to me or. Yeah, yeah, yeah to somebody else maybe they think that is not a good intention to go and assault somebody on live television you know there's a difference there so right yeah but good intentions in the sense that you're just doing positive things exactly that is not hurting anyone exactly yeah. like you're not yeah. doing anything bad intentionally yeah or just Perfect. because of a selfish reason mm-hmm. I, like, is there anything that gets like you i don't know gets you excited or like something like that i don't know like i don't know i just I, i'm i'm usually interested in hearing like What makes people tick? Huh? What makes people what? Like, what tick. makes people like them, and like, what makes people unique in a certain way, or for like how they think? And mm. like, I think you fit in that like category. Yep. And I don't think we've reached a point where like I can actually okay okay tell why you're the way you are. Okay, sure. I mean, like, I don't I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, I understand. Like, so I guess I another way to ask you a question. Is that um, this professor recommended us to to ask, you know, in what ways were you lucky or what ways were you fortunate? Like, what oh. are some of the things? But I guess the, the reason why I want to know is like, like, what were some of the things that like made you who you are, like, made you unique and like so interested in like helping others and like politics and like, because I don't see these type of things. Like most people, if you were like most people, you'd be doing CS. <laughs> You'd be doing an MP, and you'd be like really sad. I'd be grinding the MP the <laughs> night before. <laughs> yeah, it would have. We probably would have never like met, or like not met, but like talked because like oh yeah, CF whatever. Actually, yeah. You would never have done. Yeah. Would have never, would have never done your app or anything like that because you would have been no, yeah. MPs and MPs and MPs. Um. Um. Wait, what can I answer the question? So like what? So the question is what? What makes you you? What makes me? Hmm. I guess I think one thing I th- I didn't mention this. I think one thing I used to be like a like a bookworm like read like two books a week. Like in in high school we had like read for a lifetime. So in in, in Illinois if you read a certain set of books um every year for four years. So I did that. You know, that was like a hundred books. But then outside of that I read a lot and it was a lot of different genres. Uh, you know, some would be like non-fiction fiction some would focus on contemporary news or contemporary uh events some would be like fantasies about a perfect world or about historical fiction stuff like that um and reading really helped me kind of understand how can what are some what are different people like because obviously i can't meet every single different right. type of human being in my lifetime i don't think i will even coming to college i just love it because there's so many different people here um and my background i guess from really reading that really gave me an understanding of okay this is what people are like these are sometimes people that you know need help and you're reading it and then you see it in real life and you're more attentive to it in real life mm-hmm. and once i'm reading and then in my life i'll see oh my god i've read about this before or here it is in front of my eyes it makes it much more sentimental or like meaningful when you know you have this paper experience of it and now you're seeing it in real life i i guess you could think about uh, about it as like reading a book and seeing the movie like what is the real manifestation of that and that's how now i look at everyone and i think like oh my god i wonder where this person came from like i wonder what's their story uh what are they like you know what makes people quiet or what makes people really outgoing um and like how am i what am i like i would say like i'm in the middle like like you mentioned you're different to different people i think you know a different version of me like you know a different version of me uh, and so it depends and i would say i'm not an introvert nor extrovert but i'm in the middle like or i can be who i want to be at a certain point in time Whoa. yeah i think with a lot of people i'm different like you like you will know me differently than mm-hmm. somebody else Yeah, they they told me some stories about you. <laughs> oh, I reckon <laughs> no, <I'm> yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting because you know you know someone and you see you question yourself: Do I know them or do I know that version of them? Right. 
And that's what like runs through my mind all the time. Like I love people. Like I love learning about people. Why are people a certain way? And that's why I love like studying. One of the things I'm studying is sociology. It's like exactly that. And it's so perfect. Obviously, all my questions aren't answered. Like why are people the, sh- the way that they are? But I'm, you know, getting there more a deeper understanding. And it's just like what I'm reading, I'm seeing. And it makes everything come together. Mm. Like perfect. Like yeah. you're getting answers for yeah. things they're looking for. And I'm getting answers to things that I never knew I wanted to know about. Right. right. And you're absorbing them more now just because you know them. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. yeah. So um, we, we talk about how we want to help people and we want to create like a better world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to know what you think about um, dystopia. Like, I'm sure you have read books which talk about dystopian world yeah. or like seen movies about yeah. them. Um, how, how do you react with it or what are your how is looking at a dystopian world um, helped you like understand better what we need right now? Mm-hmm. In dystopias, there's often a lack of individuality or lack of like free will, like I would say, like doing the things you want to do. And I would say in our life right now, we do have that choice to do every, we wake up every day, we say, what are we going to do? And we do exactly what we want to do. Given the conditions. You want to do investigative journalism, you're, you're doing free, man. <laughs> Sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Continue. What was I saying? Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. You, you, so you in were dy- saying, you so were saying in, that we have the, the free will. Thing. Yeah, so in a dystopia, you it's not like you don't have free will. You just can't do it, right? Or if you're so in an environment so dystopian that they're controlling your thoughts, like you said, like using sound to control people, then that's a different story where like there's there's no individuality. There's no way to be free. Right. Um, and you get brainwashed. I think even now people are very prone to that, but I'm forgetting what I was saying. But um wait, can you do the question? <laughs> 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 all right so so we're good but it's fine yeah, yeah, yeah. basically <laughs> yeah no listen it's fine no, don't worry about it thanks yeah so i think i think yeah so you, th- you think a lot about whether you know people or not yeah we've known each other for maybe a little do you think you know me or do you in, in, do you think i know you mm. i would say i don't think i know you as well as i would like to and i don't think you know me as well as i would like you to know me okay and maybe that's just because we've we've known each other for a long time, but we haven't actually like seen each other, you know, like talked for more than I don't know x amount of time. Mm-hmm. So th- there's gaps like that. Yeah, it's hard to form like a friendship or just any like connection to somebody. But yeah, I don't think anyone like really knows me. I I wouldn't say anyone really knows me. Like. Very good friend. I don't know, maybe my parents, yeah. But I guess a friend. I mean, most of the friends I have right now, I met them like in September or whatever, or some October. So I, it's only been a short window of time. And I i haven't had lifelong friends because I've moved uh, as I was growing up. So I, I, that's something I kind of think about. Like some people, they have like these friends from like kindergarten. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like, that's surreal. That would be amazing if I had like a friend like that. But also I see the benefit in not having known someone for so long because then you don't feel like you can change where you have to live up to like, oh, this person knows me as such. I have to be that way. But when you meet new people, you can give them a different version of yourself. Maybe fix qualities that you, you know, had bad qualities before and you want to fix those. So, yeah, I think people in that way, it's 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 very like, I, I guess it depends the friendship that you make. Each person you'll have a different friendship with. Do you fear making? Do you fear people knowing you, or like having this long form, like long? No, I think it would be really cool to have a really long friendship with someone, or knowing someone for a really, really long time. Um, because sometimes there's like a chemistry that you can't you can't make like that. You can't make in a couple months or a year. It takes time to build that friendship and that relationship. And it, it would be awesome to, you know, know somebody that well. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely open and excited to do that. Okay, what well, would you like me to know that you said you would like me 
you would like me to know no. about you? Is there anything that comes to mind? Mm. <laughs> I feel like that happens naturally. No, but like, I don't know, like maybe like... Like right now, I couldn't... There's not like something I want you to... Yeah. Like that I can think of that yeah, I want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess Juan David should know this about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I like if I had a business card to give <laughs> with things you should know about me, yeah, okay. which at the undergraduate research program I will, so you can take well, a card then. But um, no, I don't have like I can't think of anything right now. Like in that sense, I think it would take time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just weird. Like and I, me? And I, no, 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 no. No, I think it, no, no weird. Like, I think it's interesting mm -hmm. because it's such a. I think that I think could tell a lot about how you think in, in the sense of like what you would like to do in the future and everything. And yeah, I do want, I guess that, you know, you can, I can say like, I want to do X, I want to do a talk show like that. Yeah. But like, I wonder like, what are some of the fears or things that I need, I ignore to think about that could be like, could be, could be impulsing me to do, wanting to do these things. Like for instance, you said you you would like to have these long friendships from like since skin. You don't have that, right? Yeah. And like, you would like that. And I'm wondering like how that could affect like what you're doing now, because maybe some part of you deep inside of you wants to replicate that and kind of does everything in order to have that thing. Mm -hmm. Which again, I don't I don't know if it's true or not, but it just like it is so hard to know actually know what are like what are you, why we act the way we act yeah it's extremely difficult and that's why i like i like kind of humans that personalities that are different like you'll have 10 different personalities say um and you don't know which one you're using at any given moment but i guess your mind does it brings out a certain part of you at a certain moment some may be natural some may be just you know unique to you so that always makes me curious about people uh because sometimes i observe you know the way someone treats someone like person x and then me and i know this version of that person but that other person knows somebody else so how can you close someone in jane because i think you're probably pretty good at that mm. you tell me that people have approached you have yeah. approached you in the quad and stuff like that and like people like I mean, that happens, never happens to me, but <laughs> it happens. people just like approach it, like, like, how do you, and because of like everything, you know, like, how do you know if people are genuine? How do you know if people mm. are just curious or just are being yeah. themselves? Like, how do you, you know, like, cap, basically, how, how do you like judge people? How do I? So I would, how do I judge someone to know the genuine is what you're saying. You, me personally, you know, you talk to the person. I'm never somebody who someone comes up to me and I'm like, within like five minutes, I get an idea of like, do, is this person like legit or sus? Like, I'm not that type of person. But so I guess with, I'll give an example of the people I've met last semester. I met like so many different people. And now, right now, like half of them, I don't know anymore out of my personal choice to, you know, not continue that friendship. Um, so it takes time. So first, say, say you meet somebody and, you know, you talk to them, you get to know them, you hang out with them, you eat dinner with them. Um, I think like one of the best ways to know someone is to eat with them uh, because when you're eating, it's like food, first of all, it makes everyone happy, right? And then... So that's true? I mean... No, I don't know. <laughs> you know, Juan David, you should eat some <laughs> food that I made, Indian food. Okay. You will be very happy. I'll, I'll Anyways, yeah, you should, yeah. All right. So, so yeah, food makes people happy, right? And when you th when people eat food, maybe they think of their families or they think of a, an environment that's comforting, that's, you know, inviting and warm. And so you, that's where you really have conversations that go with the flow. And I think if someone is genuine, that conversation, it won't stop. Who knows where it will branch out into what you'll talk about, whatever. Um, another thing is like favors. I know this is, maybe it's kind of weird but if they ask like the the favors that people ask tell a lot about them the way that they act toward you obviously tells a lot about them you can tell if someone is genuine if they 
stick with you, you know, regularly, say, and not just hit you up like mm-hmm. every week for like homework yeah exactly the homework or like oh can you spot me or or like oh i know you know this person can you you know get me in touch or whatever that's when you know like okay are you someone's a matchmaker in- or something or what sorry are you a matchmaker or what no no, no like uh, like <laughs> <laughs> like references like yeah, yeah, <laughs> connections yeah. like that yeah. um but yeah it's really about consistency like if someone wants to be a friend they will put in the effort because friendships take effort. It takes communication. It takes effort. It takes, um, you know, kindness. And so if you're not genuine, you'll see those inconsistencies over time with that person. So that's how I tell if someone's genuine or not. I think most, most people are genuine, definitely. Sometimes you have to, you know, pull strings to get what you want. And that's, that's fine. But as long as you're not hurting anyone, I think it's okay. So um, we we have a segment on our show. Okay. We we do it for every episode, and it's called underrated, overrated. And you we like to ask you a few questions and see what what you think about okay. them. Yeah. Um, let's say first one would be Hasan Minaj, um, underrated or. Uh, <laughs> okay. Did, did you go to his show last weekend? I did not. No. Okay. That, did that, you want to? That could probably tell us a lot. Anyway. So, did I want to? No, I did not want to. Okay. Even in Chicago when he went, like, I mean, he's not overrated, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's underrated also. I right. think, I mean, I know you're giving me two choices and I'm no, supposed no, to pick I mean, one. No, but no, 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 you don't have to. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm saying like him as a, as a person, as a creator, like what he does, it's, it's amazing. Right. And for someone like me to see someone like me exactly I, in a place of like power and authority and like influence i love like i love him for that i love that he's like he's indian he's muslim he's like he talks about taboo topics that nobody wants to talk right. about he calls people out when they're supposed to be called out like right and i love that about him and really i think i also wrote um <laughs> a college essay like inspired by him um but I really liked him for his commentary on like social topics like exactly. Patriot Act. That's why I liked him. him. Um, I didn't really like him for his comedy, mm-hmm. so to speak. I Personality wise, I don't think I like his personality, but what he does, I admire a lot. So I would say in the middle. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also inspired me to do comedy. Yeah, that didn't go so well. But <laughs> yeah, he's he kind, of, he kind of interesting. I don't know. It's like, I don't know, I'm not like too into like yeah. comedy and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I never, I never understood like stand up comedians. I, maybe it's something mm-hmm. with the culture that just do not understand. It's just not funny to me. Yeah. Uh, maybe just me. I don't understand like the language or like the jokes or whatever. But like for him, he just like, he's like, he has a different like kind of like comedy. He's just more like stories and like, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. just interesting. I but, think he's a very good speaker too. Yeah. And he's a fashion icon, which I, I love because like guys, like, men's fashion for like i love men's fashion like it's just amazing i don't know <laughs> but his dress <laughs> like his fashion sense his style that tells a lot about who he is as well he's like always neatly kept like he wants to look nice he influences people with the way he appears and i think that's really something commendable all right next one um MKBHD. You, you, you're into tech. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you, you oh, watch his channel. He is underrated, I, I would say. Oh, really? Okay. I So I used to watch him like in the old, old days, like MKBHD before the million dollar studio with the professional cameras. Like I'm talking like iPhone 5S mm-hmm. um, or iPhone 5. Um, and I, I used to watch a lot of tech YouTubers over the years. Now the only really tech YouTuber I'm consistent with is Marquez. And uh, I think the way he explains things, he's not trying to like hit you with specs, like right. blah, 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 blah. He wants to appear like he wants to speak to all audiences. Mm-hmm. He wants to make us understand how things work. And I appreciate that. And he's also not like he doesn't mix his work with his life. You know how like YouTubers the like vlog right, and, right. and have also like a main channel. Like, I don't like that. Yeah. I, I want to know that person for like what they do. Mm-hmm. And if they make vlogs in, in the same channel, like that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So I would say underrated. Yeah. Okay. 
for sure. I'm um, KBHD. <laughs> but you guys should check out Shelby Church for the tech stuff. Yeah, I've not heard of her. She's amazing. Like, she's like tech lifestyle. Like I said, you should check her out. Yeah, she's cool. Hmm. Yeah. I like, I used to see The Verge before oh, I yeah. found MKBHD. Mm -hmm. And then I just like watch MKBHD. Yeah. Because it's just, you get what you need out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and you, there are like other like channels like Mr. Who's the Boss or like mm -hmm. Box Therapy. But I mean, Dude, on Box Therapy, like <laughs> <laughs> this, the, the studio, yeah, yeah. like I love the way he talks. That's why I watch the videos. He's like, okay, and this Tesla, like <laughs> I don't know how he says it, but <laughs> he's cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. For sure. You have one? Yeah, I, I like your point about the, um, like, you have the YouTube, like, they have the, the YouTube channel, like, the, the blogging thing. Yeah. And I think, like, if you, if you show too much of your personal life, that leaves out the mystery. And perhaps yeah. people watch the show because you want to get hints of your life and everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. why with, like, bloggers, I could never imagine, like, doing that full time because yeah. that's your life. Like, you're, you're, you're literally giving up your, I mean, not giving up, I guess, but showing something that should be very personal like your personality to millions of people um but as long as you're having fun i guess like that, that that's a dream job but it's also like very stressful i feel like but how much does it take <laughs> from you enjoying your life though because you're always shooting yourself exactly you're never living in the moment though. exactly i think a great example of like a youtuber that went through that was like there's a couple it's like prank versus prank bf versus gf they have like three different channels or whatever I mean, they used to prank each other. That's how they got famous. And they started vlogging like almost every single day. And that like ruined their relationship. They they were like dating for 10 years and then they broke up after 10 years. And like that vlogging ruined their life, literally. So there's a line there and it's hard. It's hard to find because when you're in the moment, it's really hard. Yeah. I actually did that. Mm -hmm. not, not really, but I did a hundred, like during, the, during COVID, I was like, I, I, I was trying to do YouTube. I just... I don't know, you just didn't think, oh, I was too young or like, don't know enough, yeah. whatever. So I just did it. I did one video like for every day for 100 days. Like, not blogging, but just like more so talking about ideas. I wasn't like, oh, like, here's me washing the dishes. Like, not, not, not I've seen, Yeah, like I've that. seen your channel. I like oh, yeah, it. No, you make you Spanish have. videos too. <laughs> I did some a couple, of them, yeah. A couple because um, <laughs> my theory would be like, perhaps some of the ideas that I know in English, people don't talk about it a lot. And I've done that. And a lot of those videos yeah. are actually the most popular. Even though that's the the few I've made, because I share them and then these English people like share them, and they go like, yeah, not viral, but yeah, they get more views. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for for coming and and for your time. Maybe wasting a little bit, but also you know, it's a fun conversation. Yeah, it was definitely a great conversation. Not a waste of time at all. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had fun. Yeah. yeah, oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. This is awesome. This is amazing. Like, I love what you guys do. Like, it's great. No, like, it was, it was great having you. I would say, like, when I was... No. You need, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I was going to say, uh, you need to help us with the, the thumbnails. I'm your, down. Your I'm design down was, like, insane. What, so you liked the one that I sent? Yeah. And you... So all... Like, do you want me to like send you more? <laughs> like, what? yeah, I mean, we can we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay, sure, let's yeah. You know, you know, like how you have a blue thing, maybe yellow, and then like have the other thing like white or something, mm -hmm. like something that like, just like stands out and sort of, like a lunch with, with with the logo that okay. you created. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. The UIC talk show logo. Yeah. Okay, awesome, perfect. It's right. awesome. Cool. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you learned a lot from this conversation. If you have any questions for Husna, please put them in the comments and. We'll make sure to get them to her and get them answered. I'm sure she'll be more than delighted to answer those questions for yes. you. Um, as you can see, um, Husna is a multifaceted person. She's doing a lot in her life right now, and she she's trying her best to achieve her goals and maybe just get a little bit closer every day by working by doing what she does. So um, I hope you can appreciate that and maybe learn a little something out of it. Um, stay curious, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.